Eastern Airways is certainly not the most known airline outside of the UK, but this is something that might be changing in the near future. Hello and welcome to a new video here on the channel where we will take a closer look at Eastern Airways. Now yesterday I came in on the inaugural flight between Esbjerg and Humberside on Eastern Airways and I've done a trip report on that. So if you would like to see that, you can check it out. It should pop up in the top right corner and I also have left a link to it in the video description below. But for now, let's head inside and hear more about Eastern Airways. There might be many good reasons why Eastern Airways isn't the most known airline, despite an impressive 25 years of scheduled services. But the easiest explanation is that for much of the airline's history, Eastern Airways has been operating on behalf of other airlines, such as British Airways or Fly B. Only in recent years has the airline again been flying under its own banner, with an impressive UK domestic network and now also growing international ambitions. We started out and founded by flying oil and gas workers primarily, and that's then evolved into a lot more leisure routes. Um, so we're an independent company, uh, fly, we've currently got just over 20 airframes or aircraft ranging from the Embraer down to the Jetstream, uh, and it's really connecting predominantly the UK, Ireland, some parts of Europe, but with a lot of charter work and and work for corporate clients. The airline's daily operations are monitored and organized from the airline's headquarters, still situated from where the airline's history began 25 years ago, at Humberside Airport. But keeping aircraft on the move isn't always as easy as it might appear. Today in particular, we've had a lot of snow in several of the airports that we've been visiting today, and uh, it causes a lot of snow closures. and. Um, uh, and that kind of has a quite a lot of challenges in regards to uh, dealing with aircrafts and uh, and uh, the problem that we kind of uh, see at the moment is that uh, when it when it closes uh, because of snow and it opens there's several airlines that need to kind of go straight away um, so we have to be booked in uh, a queue for de-icing so it's a matter of just um, pre-predicting where we can actually go when we can go sometimes it's uh, it's a lot more harder than it is because uh, there'll be like a queue for ta um, queue for taxing. There'll be a queue for um, getting de-iced. Uh, there'll be a queue for handling. So uh, when we need a push to get off our stand, we we have a struggle. We could be fully ready, but we're waiting on other third-party uh, companies to help us out. So, and that's some of the challenges when when it snows. Taking on more than just one role is not unusual at smaller airlines, which is something the airline but also the airline staff can greatly benefit from. Throughout Covid, um, they asked me to come back in the office uh, as well as fly. And uh, I kind of like the role in the office because it gets me to work with um, several different uh, people. Um, I like that show, the thrill of the chase of uh, kind of working with my team to try and get um, the best turnaround times, to get uh, efficient turnaround times and making our aircraft fly. Because actually uh, fly as well as do as operations, it's a very great advantage for me because um, I know the disadvantages as being in the right hand seat or a left hand seat in the flight deck and not knowing the full picture where pilots can get a bit uh, frustrated. Uh, and again, being in the flight deck as well, I can actually help the captain out with my knowledge and my experience from working in operations as well. So, But uh, the flying side of things, um, that's what I live for, that's what I love doing. Um, maybe not today because of the snow, um, but uh, overall I love the flying part of it as well. The Jetstream 41 is truly the workhorse of Eastern Airways and here at Humberside Airport, actually right inside this hangar, the mechanics of Eastern Airways are taking good care of these aircraft. We're predominantly based on base maintenance, so the aircraft comes in, we strip it down completely, my task is to strip down all the avionics to make availability to the bulkheads for the fitters to get in and do their inspections. It's built in the, uh, without being biased, but there's a British engineering and it's, it's as solid as a rock as a jet stream. It just keeps going and going and going. I mean, they're quite an old aircraft now in terms of things, but grafters of the air, we'd like to call them. 
The Jetstream 41, being a quite small aircraft in today's aviation world, means that operating the aircraft is a bit different from the perspective of the crew than with most other aircraft types. We do recruit um, for cabin crew who are able to work by themselves as we do operate as a single cabin crew operator. That means that the cabin crew member, once they finish their training, their ground school, um, they will then have to um, complete the equivalent of 20 hours or 15 sectors by themselves with a line trainer until they're signed off and then they will manage the cabin and the operation and the flight by themselves. Of course, with Eastern apart from the jet stream also operating ATR and Embraer aircraft, crews can experience a multitude of tasks and routes. So there is a lot of variation. Um, the cabin crew can be tri-rated, which means they can operate on three different aircraft types. Um, Sometimes the Jetstream 41, which is a single crew operation, or the E-Jets or the ATR, which is two crew. So it gives a nice variation as well for the cabin crew, but lots and lots to, to learn and to refresh on their knowledge and to demonstrate their understanding and their knowledge of the aircraft types. So all the cabin crew come back every year and will complete a, a year with us in our training facility. Um, and they'll be tested on all the aircraft types and first aid, their security knowledge, dangerous goods every two years um, and they will also complete refresher training with the pilots as well so we'll do joint um, training sessions too. So it is not uncommon for smaller airlines to outsource their crew trainings but as we heard Eastern Airways has dedicated facilities right here at Humberside Airport and they have the one and perhaps only Jetstream 41 simulator. Yes, I mean, this is the only Jetstream 41 simulator in the world. The only other one was in Florida, which got dismantled last year. So I treat it no differently from any, any other simulator I've worked on. It is a simulator. So to me, there is no great prestige about it. But yes, obviously, because it is unique, there is a prestige about it. With the simulator, Eastern Airways can ensure that the airline's pilots remain well trained on the Jetstream and can maintain their type rating. Basically, all pilots will go through the simulator twice a year. They'll carry out all the emergency. Basically, what they're doing is making sure that they know what they're doing, they safely carry out the correct procedures. But it's not only Eastern Airways pilots that benefit from the simulator. We get uh, pilots from France, Nepal and Venezuela. So from operations to maintenance to crew training, there's lots of things going on behind the scenes to get an aircraft up in the sky. I've been Christoph from Bungo Planes, reporting from Humberside Airport. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon in another video here on the channel.